Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay. In recent weeks, Yemeni authorities have announced that al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and its leaders have been under attack. It's pretty well known. The Americans have been in on helping Yemeni authorities and they claim they have killed several leaders of the organization. But just why is al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and what is going on in Yemen? And why is it that it looks like the United States may be entering another front of their war against what they call the war on terrorism? Joining us now from Sweden to help us understand what's taking place in Yemen is Walid al sakaf He's a media researcher. He specializes on internet censorship. But before that, he was the editor of the Yemen Times. He's also written for the Gulf News and the Wall Street Journal. Thanks for joining us, Walid. Thank you. There's a conference that's just ended in London with NATO and some of the other big powers talking about the future of Yemen. What went on there? And then we'll dig into what is going on in Yemen. Basically, the idea was that to bring Yemen uh, away from the uh, falling to the cliff and becoming a real failed state. The situation is quite severe and the a country is coping with lots of uh, crises. Among them is the war in the north and the separatist movement in the south. And now, increasingly, Al-Qaeda is a great, grave threat to the country. And the international community is now looking into it, partly because Al-Qaeda is becoming a threat not only to the regime in Yemen, but also to the world. There's a lot of critique of what came out of the conference. Some critics are suggesting that, once again, the solution seems to be a, a military solution and some of the underlying problems are not really being addressed. What's, what's your view of this? The conference itself it was a good idea, but the thing is that it uh, had fallen short of many of our expectations in terms of dealing with the root problems of the crisis in Yemen. I mean, unfortunately, the artificial view is that Yemen is um, marred with some conflicts and it needs art, uh, military support, intelligence, and so on. And this is what the West has been drumming up for for the last, uh, I don't know, a few weeks. The issue in Yemen is much deeper than that. And it's a really a conflict within the society concerning the real deep emotional and social struggles that are facing the uh, people in Yemen. I mean, one of the basic, uh, very crucial uh, problems that Yemen needs to deal with is a se secessionist movement in the South. And not even even a small paragraph was mentioned about this in the conference, as if it didn't exist. While we see thousands of people marching in the streets, uh, demonstrators being killed, and lots of those aspects are never mentioned. Describe for us some of the roots of the issue. Northern Yemen and Southern Yemen were two countries. During the Cold War, Southern Yemen, if I understand it correctly, became more allied with the Soviet Union. There's quite a complicated roots to this. It's not a simple story. So give us some of the background. Since 1990, when this South and North Yemen united into one country after the fall of the USSR, the aspirations and the idea and the plan was to bring about a country that's united, that is democratic, and that's how uh, the regime had adopted a multi-party system, one of the f a few in the region. And the promise was to make Yemen a full-fledged democracy, an example for others. The issue is that uh, in 1994, a civil war broke out between the former leader of the South, Ali Salim al and the, and the current actual president, Ali Saleh, who was the president of the North. And the Northern Army prevailed. But why did the civil war take place? Because originally during the unification, the South had bought into the idea of unification. Each party has its, his own, <laughs> of course, a part of a history written. The issue is that the conflict was merely for power. And given that the South felt that it didn't get enough power in terms of uh, sharing resources or sharing positions and ensuring perhaps uh, a number of services are met in the South and uh, money and wealth and oil and various aspects of uh, resources in the country were not distributed according to the South equally. So what happened is that the, this resulted in some sort of uh, protest by the South. And the North, of course, given that it's uh, more than 80% uh, of the population, while smaller in area, it still did not accept those justifications. So it ended in um, a conflict. I mean, it resulted in two armies fighting each other. The real issue is that what happened after 94, provided that the Northern Army, which was actually given the pretext of defending unity, went into the South. The idea, even for Southerners, was that, okay, now that we have no more secessionist movements, the country would go back to uh, maintaining their dream and becoming a real unified democratic country. However, uh, unfortunately, since then, the Southerners have felt that they have been really uh, deprived of their rights 
and their resources. They feel marginalized. They've not had enough uh, opportunities in terms of uh, services, education, health, not much spent on, on infrastructure in the South. That's what they claim. And since then, they've been launching uh, campaigns, demonstrations, uh, bringing, about, uh, bringing up the issue of social justice, bring equality to South and North. And, and I would say if the West and the world doesn't really look into the Southern plight right now, and it would still continue to be a major, major problem for Yemen, even if they provide all the military and financial aid they would like to provide. Now, Yemen strategically is of great importance on, on one of the major oil routes. Um, it has its own oil and other uh, natural resources, uh, but the level of poverty throughout the country is, is, is very significant. Talk about that. Indeed. I mean, Yemen has uh, over 40 percent unemployment, about, let's say, half uh, below the poverty line. And we have dwindling resources. Oil revenues have dropped. The water crisis is now looming. We have... Uh, corruption, rampant corruption all over, and we have one of the world's highest uh, population growth rates. So all of those coming together in a piece of land like Yemen makes it worse because it's a mountainous area with tribal uh, regions that are out of the government control. And the issue is that the regime, unfortunately, has been somewhat uh, turning a uh, deaf ear to all those problems and focusing more on how to remain in power. During the Cold War, Everyone was interested in Yemen. There's a lot of contention given its strategic importance. Since the fall of the Soviet Union is part of the problem, who cares about Yemen? Uh, Yemen wouldn't be the only place. Afghanistan is somewhat the same kind of a story in, in that regard. What are the foreign hands involved here? It's hard to see anything going on in Yemen where the for foreign powers aren't involved, especially Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is worried about its, its borders, and it, it does have the right um, to look at it from a neutral perspective. If you uh, have some conflict going on just across the border, then you'd be worried, concerned, especially that, the, of course, uh, Saudi Arabia has the largest uh, oil reserves in the world and is uh, strategically located. Uh, Yemen is also uh, somewhat uh, strategically located when we talk about the uh, Bab el-Mandab Strait, where most of the world oil passes through. That in itself makes Saudis very concerned about the flow of oil and it makes them anxious all the time. And then the add to that the religious dimension of the issue because you may have known that there is a long struggle between Sunni and Shiite sects and the Saudis being of course the predominantly Sunni country that is supporting this. While Iran on the other hand is as if it's seen as a rival that is being claimed to have supported uh, the Houthis, which are fighting the government in Yemen. So it's a really complex situation. However, if there's only one thing clear, that's violence and, and war did not uh, resolve the issue. And it continues to deplete the government's resources. It's uh, resulting in lots of uh, innocent lives being killed. And I've just read today that over 250,000 refugees are still stranded I mean, it's real the humanitarian catastrophe going on. Well, in the next segment of our interview, let's talk about what the solutions to the Yemen crisis might be and just who is Al-Qaeda in the Arab Peninsula. Please join us for the next segment of our interview on The Real News Network.